Joe Bung podcast fallout. There were some interesting things I, I listened to on the newest episode. And one of them was because I made this a point in my last uh, video that if Rory and Ma were not some way ownership of Joe Budden podcast, Joe Budden network, something. I even say you got to give them a million percent, 15 percent split it. They both get 7.5 each. They are integral to Joe Budden's podcast empire. They're integral to it blowing up. I seen a lot of people saying shit like, oh, Rory and Ma don't deserve shit. It's called the Joe Budden podcast for a reason. That makes me feel like a lot of y'all probably wouldn't listen to it before he got an everyday struggle, right? Because a lot of people are parroting academics points on their points and you just got to stop. Get your own points. Come on, like, let's think. Let's be a little bit more realistic. Ma, I'll give it to you. He came in a little bit late, maybe like in the 80s, the 90s, maybe it was the 70s. Like he came in a little bit late to the podcast. I could be wrong about the exact numbers. Don't kill me. Rory, on the other hand, was with Joe from episode number one. When it was called, I'll name this podcast, it just got changed to the Joe Button Podcast. Now, let's not act like that. It's been the Joe Budden podcast from inception when we put it out to people. I'll name this podcast later. And let's not, please, let's not act like, nigga, well, Joe is famous. He's famous for his commentary now. Joe Budden was not the biggest podcast host off the gate. So to, to, to say Rory doesn't deserve any percentage in this podcast that he started with somebody is ridiculous. If I start something with someone, right, and they're, Famous relatively because Joe Budden wasn't his household name that he is now. I don't care about his rap career. He was not famous relatively to what he is now. He was not the cultural icon that he is now. I deserve a percentage of that. It's just like Facebook. Mark Zuckerberg thinks the idea. We got homie working in coding. We got homie working on marketing. We got homie working financing the whole deal. <coughs> Microsoft, you're employee number one. You're employee number five. The first 10 employees of Microsoft got 12% of Microsoft. They wasn't Bill Gates, but they started it, so they get a percentage of it. So at least Rory, I would think we have a percentage. But Park said, and we own, and this is an episode you can find, I don't know the exact number, but he said, we own the IP. They correct himself quickly. He said, oh, you own the IP. And I was interested. I was like, damn, so they don't have no. So whenever I hear people say they, they don't have any say-so in contracts, if Joe Budden does own 100% of the IP, he doesn't necessarily need their input on contractual things. So I thought that that was a little bit messed up. Like I said, people are parroting. I get it. It's funny. Rory and Mahler workers. Um, even now people are parroting the takes of Joe Budden when Joe Budden said, because everybody said $30 million, but now in the latest podcast he said we was offered $10 million for just the audio rights, right? Just for the audio, not for the video, not for everybody's, met, whatever, the, their music, their other ventures they got going on, whatever. $10 million, audio only. He tried to break it down. Each million, you could say you only get about three fifty spread out. I get it. That, that that isn't a lot of money in the grand scheme if you break it down that way. But the fact that they don't have any percentage of the IP to me is crazy. I don't care if it's called the Joe Budden podcast. I don't care. Now you see me. You see this platform. Do you see anybody here? Do you see any like? Do you see anybody here? No. It's just me, the camera, the microphone, and you guys. Now I own one hundred percent. But if I bring in somebody, and this is pre-blown, now if I blow up and I bring somebody in, that's different. But if I bring somebody on while I still only have 25, 40, 100 listeners, and then they're along for that journey with me, then we get to a million, that person's owed a percentage of this show, even if it's called the d Friend Show, because they're an integral part to its success. Do we honestly think that if Joe Budden was to do this right here, what I'm doing, right? And that's why I got to salute academics because he did it him and only him. No interviews, no whatever, just him and his voice. And he blew up. Respect it. Do y'all think that Joe Budden was sitting in the room by himself just talking, him and the camera, talking about cultural moments, cultural commentary? Do you think that he would be at the level he's at now? I, honest question, if you do, comment. I just want to know what you think. Do you think that he would be at the level that he is at now? Or... Is his friends with the comedy, with the funny, with the stories, what made the Joe Budden podcast what it is? So that that's all. That, that's that's all I'm looking at when I look at this situation as far as owning the piece. I think keep saying it's not about money. It's not about money. It's not about money. It's not about money. It's about respect. It's about whatever. I'd be upset. 
me and my friend have a podcast, right? If that podcast, if I blew up here, right? Say the different show blows up. Biggest hip hop single person podcast platform around. I'm a big name. And then me and him start up absolutely sure again. And my name and fame goes seeps over there and makes that podcast bigger. Me and him doing that podcast for three years. I know my name is bigger now, but me and him started it together. It'll be 50, 50. That's just me. That's just me. That's how I look. I'm not saying that Joe had to give him 50%. But <coughs> some percent, gotta have some percentage in regards to the to the um to the to the podcast worth to the podcast like IP like I give me something 7.5 10% 4% 3 like a percentage let me know that you feel like I'm vital to this operation now I don't know about you guys but I can tell you right now them even their last a couple of episodes this is detrimental for their podcast and standing in my in my playlist I'm not even gonna lie to you Nothing against the ice guy, nothing against Savon, nothing against Ish, nothing against Parks, but you know, you're kind of invested in these voices that you have on the show. You got Maul, you got Parks. I mean, not Parks, I just said Parks. You got Maul, you got Rory, you got Joe. That's what made the show what it is. Now you got the brilliant ninjas, Andrew Schultz, Charlemagne. They were great together. Great. And in the past couple of weeks, they've thrown them wax, which is honestly one of the funniest, not trying to be funniest. I don't know if he's playing dumb. He's really, I don't know. Funniest people out there. They're kid. I can listen to a brilliant, brilliant Idiots episode from start to finish. I don't need to skip nothing. I don't need to look into nothing. I don't need to see what they're discussing. I can watch this shit from front to back because it's funny and the dynamic is there. I don't care if Charlemagne is the biggest media personality in hip hop in the world, whatever. Wax is integral to that podcast. Schultz is integral to that podcast. I don't think if Charlemagne did a one on podcast by it, like I'm saying, like this, one on one, that it would be as successful as it would be if he had those people around him. Now, I don't know how their deals worked out. I'm sure that they have, because um, Andrew Schultz is huge now. YouTube big. He has his own podcast. He, he's went out and built himself from what he was from the guy code Andrew Schultz, stand up comedian to world renowned social media. Uh, I didn't mean so social media. World round comedian. Um, he got his own other podcast. And he, like, he's built himself to be that. So I'm sure he has a stake in the Brennan. He's 50 50, 49 50. I don't know. I'm sure he has a stake. But. The point being is, regardless of how y'all try to say these dudes are replaceable and you can just insert anybody here, insert that shit don't work like that. It just I know, and it's because people are parroting academics saying these guys are workers, these guys are not valuable, these guys are this, these guys are that. Let's see how it plays out. Let's see they they don't come back. Let's see Rory and Ma never come back. Let's say we keep refilling in guests, we keep putting in um, ish, we keep putting in ice, we keep putting in save on, screaming, we keep putting in, let's see how that works out for them in the long run. And then, we'll see how, what their value really is. Now, because the thing is, well, if they're so valuable, they can go make their own shit. I'm not saying them niggas valuable by themselves. Their value in lies with Joe, and Joe's value in lies with them. Let's just be honest, like, like Joe wouldn't just stay in the culture. Did you like stay in the culture? Be honest, is that a great show? Do you think State of the Culture was a staple? Do you think State of the Culture was his big... No, you know what his biggest thing always was? Joe Budden Podcast. Now, the only show that rivaled Joe Budden Podcast was obviously Everyday Struggle. Him, Academics. Academics has a big um, personality. He's very, what's the word, polarizing. You either hate him or you love him. That's another big name. That'll do good. Boom. That's a big platform. If Joe is going to do some shit with Charlemagne, you already... Come on. We already know. Huge. Big. But besides that, Joe with any random... besides. Besides, okay, look at that. Look what I just said. Besides Joe working with the two biggest media personalities in hip hop right now, who else does he work with individually by himself? Who? It's got to be Rory and Ma. You can't plug and play anybody and think that this shit's going to work out. It's going to be great. Oh, well, bring Wayne on to the Joe Button Pop. Do you think that's going to work? Are you going to like that conversation? Are you going to listen to it every single Wednesday and Saturday? Or are you going to want to listen to Rory, Ma, they got history, they got stories, they got rapport. Make it right, do whatever you got to do, bring the guys back. And that's pretty much all I got on that. Like, that's, that's my only take on the Joe Budden podcast controversy. We'll see. I've seen this one person, they're like, oh, you're completely biased. 
Biased on what? What? what I'm not Rory and Ma's homeboy. I'm not their friend. Like that doesn't being biased means you have a, a side. Like you have a stake in something. Like or you, I'm trying to protect some kind of relationship. Or I have a stake in seeing either this person go down or this person succeeding. I don't have no stake in the Joe Budden podcast. If I'm on Joe's side, I'm like, oh yeah, because I, I just, Joe's gonna get me here, and oh, I'm on Rory and them side because I'm on the side of the people. Like, there's no side to be taken. So when I see people comment dumb shit, it's just like, come on. That's what that's what I want for everybody. Even with the Lil Nas X topic, even with this topic, I want people to be able to sit back, not look at social. Don't get your don't get your opinion from social media. Really look into it. Really read into it. Form your own opinions on situations that are going on in the world. You'll feel better with yourself. Because a lot of these people that are here talking about these things, like, say for Lil Nas X, oh, Lil Nas X didn't do this. Oh, did you... Behind closed doors, talk to them. You see your homie tweet some wild shit on social media that you know they don't agree with, talk to them in person. And they're going to be the complete opposite because they really don't believe that. They want to be cool. This Social media is the new cool. It's the new cool lunch table. It's the new, like, oh, we're going to go sit with these guys because they're the cool guys. So I'm going to whatever. Yeah. Oh, my God. That, that Timmy's so funny. He's, nigga ain't saying nothing funny. But you want to be with the cool it people. So even if your opinion goes against that, you'll go with it. That's why I feel like a lot of people are miserable as well. A lot of people go with the flow and go with the narratives that they don't believe in. So they're forced to feel like they believe it and they hate themselves. And, you know. That's just the way it is. So 